Hey everyone, this is Mr. Matt. What we're going to do is discuss uh, something called Boyle's Law, which is the relationship between volume of a gas and its pressure. Um, we're going to use uh, an animation that uh, requires flash, so if you're following along, you want to try this on your own. Um, you want to make sure you're using a browser that supports uh, flash. So Google right now will not work. Uh, so I'm using the app uh, Puffin. Uh, I think Safari would work as well. So you're going to search for Boyle's Law Animation, and uh, the site that we're going to use is the first one here. It's the Physics Chemistry Interactive uh, website. And they've got lots and lots of really great animations for all sorts of different science uh, concepts. So we're going to click on this and open it. If you're using this on your iPad and you're uh, looking there, you'll notice in the top left when I touch the screen, it says full screen. You want to press that and uh, otherwise you won't be able to sort of manipulate things in the next screen. So in the bottom right we're going to hit enter and now we have this uh, syringe hooked up to a pressure sensor and uh, so I'm on the uh, bottom left where it says show air inside the syringe I'm going to click that and that's usually the only one that I uh, take a look at. What's nice about it, it shows all the different gas particles moving at different speeds and so forth and when they hit the size of the container, that's when pressure is created. And so those particle collisions on a small scale are what causing the, the pressure that we see um, sort of quantified in the pressure sensor. So what you could then do is that you could start taking some series of pressure uh, measurements along with the volume of the gas. So, um, so for instance, right now it's about 50, and then my, my pressure... Uh, gauge is reading about a thousand. And that's hectopascals. Uh, so then what you can do is that you can move the syringe in and out taking various uh, recordings of your temperature. So let's, or excuse me, your, your pressure and your volumes of your gases. So I can move this into 40 for instance. There we go. It's a little bit slow to react. So let's say I move it to 40 then I could record the uh, uh, the pressure if I, as I continue to make this smaller um, you'll notice that the pressure goes up on, on, the, um, uh, on the pressure sensor. But also, you notice that on the small scale, what's happening with the gas particles, you have a lot more collisions. And the more collisions you have, the higher pressure you will have on the big scale. If I go very, very small, as small as it'll let me, you'll notice that uh, our pressure goes way up and uh, the number of collisions increases accordingly. Okay. Going back to the original reading, if I were to make the space bigger by attenuating the gas, making the gas occupy a bigger space, you'll notice there are less particle collisions and consequently the pressure will go down. So what we can uh, learn from this is quite a lot of things. So one is that uh, gas pressure is caused on a small scale by all those particle collisions of the gas as they hit the size of the container not when they hit each other, but when they hit the sides of the container. Um, as you make the volume go down, the pressure goes up. As the volume increases, pressure will go down. So what you have is an inverse relationship between uh, pressure and volume. Okay. Now the trick is, uh, for, is how could we maybe predict how a change in uh, volume would affect uh, a, a gas. And so what we're going to do is kind of analyze some data that I collected. Okay, so I'm going to, I've already run through this process and recorded a series of volume and pressure measurements. Um, and we'll take a look at that now. Okay, so this is our paperwork that we have. And as you can see what I did is that I wrote down some volume and pressure uh, measurements. And um, and so then what I did is I looked at trying to figure out a relationship between the numbers. So I took the volume and pressures and I multiplied them. And then I took the volume and pressures and I divided them. And I was trying to look for a pattern here. And what I noticed that when I take um, my pressure and my volumes and I multiply them, I'm getting pretty much the same number, somewhere right around 50,000. Uh, the amount isn't necessarily important, but it's the idea that all of this all of these pressure and volume numbers, anytime that I take one pressure and one volume number and I multiply them, um, I'm getting a similar number as I do for uh, when I change the volume and what the new pressure would be. 
okay? So what we can do is actually use this information to figure out a formula for Boyle's Law, okay? So the idea is that if I have a gas sort of at sort of the original condition, so if I have, you know, like we started out in the syringe was about halfway filled with, uh, with uh, air, and so if I took the, the pressure and the volume reading uh, under the original conditions, and I multiply those two numbers, I get about 50,000. And then, no matter what I change the volume to under my new conditions, okay, so if I have kind of my new conditions, and I take a second set of pressure and volume readings, and I multiply them together, I'm getting the same number. So what we can do with this, since one set of pressure and volume numbers equal the same as a second set of pressure and volume numbers of that gas, what we can do is that we can set P1V1 equal to P2V2, okay? So I'm going to say that P1 and V1 are equal to P2 and V2. So uh, because we can, and again, we can say that because they both equal the same number, okay? So what that allows the scientist to be able to do is if they have a gas at a known pressure and volume and they change the volume, they will be able to figure out uh, what the new pressure will be, okay? Um, similarly, if they have a pressure, if they have a gas at a certain pressure and volume and they want to achieve a certain pressure, they will know what volume to put it at, okay? If I was explaining this sort of an algebra, if we know three of these four variables, we can figure out the fourth, okay? Um, one thing I should make mention is that um, temperature is constant at, uh, in, when you're talking about Boyle's Law, okay? So when we would do this experiment in class, this would be normally done at room temperature, but as long as temperature was constant, um, then Boyle's Law applies. Um, also, what we should sort of talk about is this idea about um, what's the relationship between pressure and volume. And so our graph for Boyle's Law would look something like this. Pressure on the uh, y-axis, volume on the x. And uh, sometimes you see these inverted online, but I think this is the proper way of going about it. Uh, and then the line that you get is a curve. So we talked about... Um, how pressure and volume have this inverse relationship. So as the volume goes down, uh, the, the pressure will go up because the gas doesn't have as much space. You have more particle collisions. So you have an indirect relationship there. The same could be said if the volume went up, okay, and so the gas had more space to move, you'd have less particle collisions and less pressure. Now, sometimes you'll you have an inverse relationship, but um, the line would be a straight line, but this one's a curved line. So if we think about um, the origin at being at zero, zero, well, as you approach uh, this area um, in terms of having a small volume, um, as you make the volume of a gas smaller, you increase the number of particle collisions, and you would actually never be able to get to a zero volume uh, because you still have gases there, and gases take up space. And uh, if you were squeezing in a syringe, a closed syringe, uh, full of air, you would not be able to compress it down to a zero volume. Uh, similarly, if we thought, will our line ever reach the x-axis, which would be meaning having a zero pressure, as long as you have gas particles in there, the gas particles, when they hit the sides of the container, create pressure. Uh, so the only way that you could have a zero pressure would be if you had no gas in there at all, a vacuum, like out in space. So um, sort of with that in mind, um, that sort of explains why this uh, graph is a, a curve and not a straight line. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, sort of explained the ideas behind Boyle's Law, how we arrive at the uh, formula for Boyle's Law. Okay, which is right here, P1, V1 equals P2 at a constant temperature. Um, we have the idea the relationship is an indirect relationship, and we have also have the idea about what our graph should look like. All right, hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.